Okay, let me move on to the message for today, which you're all waiting for. You've, you've seen the title of my message. And I should say that uh, uh, the, uh, the perfect introduction to this message was the speaking of life. And as you will see, uh, my message, uh, which titles The Touch of Royalty, Dr. Greg Williams introduced to us that last Sunday was actually Christ the King Sunday. Uh, and I was just also reflecting on our opening video, which talked about all things hold together in Christ. And that is the significance of Christ being the King. Ultimately, in his hands, he will hold all things together. But anyway, let me not get my get ahead of myself. Let me just move on. As, as I think about royalty, of course, I can't help but, you know, uh, bring... Uh, let me see, is this working? Uh, let me see. Oh, there you are. Okay. I can't help but think about what happened recently, right? <laughs> uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, passed away and she was 96 years old I don't know how many how long she reigned was it 70 years or something like that um, so and so of course uh, I, I mention it as Queen Elizabeth but she's no more queen now we have a king um, and BBC had a very special coverage of her uh, uh, especially her uh, the funeral procession and I watched a bit of it uh, and I watched at a time where the the, the BBC anchor was uh, interviewing those who knew the Queen and just to bring back memories about what they remember about the Queen. Uh, and most all of those that I watched on the on the on the coverage mentioned how tremendously uh, blessed they were that the queen touched them in either in the sense of a shake hand or a pat or whatever you know and that personal attention that she gave to the people uh, that were being interviewed they were so uh, what do you say enamored by the touch of royalty you know because obviously she was the queen and some of you probably have seen pictures of her travel and, you know, whenever she, a motorcade, and then when, when she's meeting people, there are people who are constantly reaching out, trying to shake hands. And of course, not only the queen, but president or a celebrity, they're all just wanting to touch them, right? I mean, this the there is a desire to touch royalty or a celebrity. Uh, we are, it's so inherent in us as human beings, uh, you know, this need or desire to touch. And I can't help but tell you a little bit about my own tryst with royalty. <laughs> Did you know that the Queen visited Hyderabad back in 1983? Now, some of you probably were not even born at that time, right? <laughs> But the Queen of England visited Hyderabad. Uh, and I came to know that her motorcade was passing by Begum Pit. I was, uh, you know, my father and I were living at that time in, in a flat in Begum Pit. And I said, I can't help but, uh, you know, not miss this opportunity to see the Queen go by. In heart of heart, I thought she would stop and come and shake hands with us, but of course that didn't happen, right? But um, I stood on the Begumpet Bridge with along with a whole lot of people waiting for the motorcade to pass by, and then there she was, you know, uh, passing the, the 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 queen passing by. I was just looking, researching on the internet, just see if I can get some pictures. Of course, there was no pictures of Begumpet uh, at the road or the she passing by, I, but I got some pictures. Oh, uh, there you are, November 1983. Uh, Chief Minister, the late N.T. Rama Rao, was the one who was uh, shaking hands with her husband, Queen uh, King Philip. And is this working? No, not working. Okay, then you see uh, the Queen 
worshipped at the Holy Trinity Church in Bolaram. And uh, uh, you probably see Bishop Sugandar there. Right? <laughs> he was a young man at that time. So the queen visited the Holy Trinity Church in Bolaram. So I thought, uh, you know, talk about talking about the touch of royalty. I mean, we Hyderabadis also had this uh, privilege of having uh, this the queen visit us. Let me see if this will move to the next slide. No, yes, there you are. Well, most of us may never have the opportunity to be blessed with the touch of royalty. I don't know if any one of you have shook hands with a with a king or a queen. I haven't, certainly. Closest I came to it was standing on the bridge, the Begumpet Bridge, and see royalty going by. And yet, uh, I want us to know that we have an even better touch and you know what I'm going to talk about, right? The better touch, a better touch than that of royalty. Uh, it's a touch that brings not just a sense of euphoria in us, but it's a touch that brings healing. It's a touch that brings transformation, redemption. It's a touch that brings salvation. It's a touch that brings acceptance. It's a touch that brings love, intimacy, friendship. Right? It's a touch that opens the door to the kingdom of God. What a wonderful touch that would be. And that is why in Matthew chapter 19, um, you remember the uh, the incident where it says, Jesus says, let the children come to me and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After he placed his hand, notice the touch, he placed his hand on them, he went away. And even as we talk about children, let me just congratulate our kids today for the excellent uh, rendition that they had. Uh, thank you so much. It makes it so beautiful to have participation and the children participating in our worship is something that is uh, really, really wonderful. Thank you, Selena, that you are inspiring the children, but more than that, you are sowing a seed in their hearts, which I pray will germinate one day and they will be good leaders of the church. But coming back to what we were discussing, Jesus Christ is what I'm talking about, who I'm talking about. The divine touch of Jesus Christ. You know, it is the touch of the King of Heavens and the Earth. Right? It is the touch of not just royalty, but divinity of heaven, a touch of infinite value. And like I said earlier, a touch that transforms our lives in very powerful ways. I already mentioned, and in the, in the video we already watched, that we celebrate what we call is, as the liturgical calendar comes to an end, Christ the King Sunday. It's also called Feast of Christ the King because Christ is the Lord of all creation. He is declaring a kingdom that is not of this world. Jesus Christ the King seated at the right hand of God. That's what we are celebrating as we remember Christ the King Sunday. Uh, and we move now slowly but surely towards the new season, the beginning of the new calendar, the advent, the coming of Christ our Lord, the incarnation. And it's that touch that we want to focus on a little bit today. 
right? In the reading we had, we, you know, the, the reading focused on the woman with the issue of blood as uh, it is recorded in the book of Mark. But just before that, we have Jairus, or, 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 uh, Jairus, who also, you know, recognized the importance of the touch of Jesus Christ, right? He knew, he knew how valuable the touch was. And we don't have it on the screen, but let me just read Mark chapter 5, a few verses before, in verse 22. Then one of the synagogue leaders, he was a leader of the synagogue, named Jairus, came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. I mean, he, he knew who Christ was. The fact that he would even fall at the feet, you know, humbling himself before the king, because he recognized him as the king. He pleaded in verse 23, earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and notice this. Please come and put your hands on her. He recognized the value of touch, of the touch of Jesus Christ, so that she will be healed. And so Jesus went with him. Jesus decided to go and give her that touch of life. And that is what that touch brings about. His faith in Jesus was so great. And we're talking about Jairus. That only his touch was enough. Only his touch was enough. To raise her from. You know. Almost death. Into life. And of course. Then we have the dramatic story. Of the woman. Who had an issue of bleeding. Right. And uh, let me just read a part of that. If you can go to the next one. Uh, yeah, slide. Thank you. And notice it says, and a woman reading from Mark 5 and verse 25, a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Notice the touch again, but this is a reverse touch. <laughs> Right, uh, verse twenty-eight. I'll, I'll explain that a little bit in, in a while. Verse twenty, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I mean, not even touch him, his body, but just what is clinging to his body, his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. The touch of healing, right? A suffering, of course, as the scripture records, was so great that notice, you know, if you if you if you uh, recognize the old covenant perspective of bleeding, you know, a woman is declared unclean when she is bleeding, and no notice number of years, how many years she was untouchable, and we know what that is like in our country. Yeah, now she was an untouchable. She was shunned from society. You see? And that was part of her suffering. And that's why it says the one the, the, she suffered a great deal. And uh, not only that fact, the fact that she was an untouchable and shunned from society, notice she became destitute, spent all her money on uh, you know, uh, physicians who were unable to do what she was uh, hoping that she would uh, be healed. And then she says, she heard about Jesus and she knew about the touch. <laughs> and she said, if I only just touch his clothes, notice the undoubted, undoubtedly unwavering faith she has in this person that we call Jesus Christ. She knew that this Lord, that people called Lord, had power and authority over disease and sickness and even death. You see, I mean, uh, that's Christ the King. His authority over disease and sickness and death was something that she 
believed in, had faith in. And her response was just to touch him. In that faith that she had, just to touch him. And when she did, interesting, isn't it? That Jesus was conscious of that touch. Did you notice that? Jesus was conscious of that touch. He knew something had happened. A healing had taken place. A, divi a divine power had, you know, uh, pervaded and brought healing to a, a, a person who was uh, in distress. Uh, and the response of Jesus is automatic, right? When someone was reaching out to her, right? Am I doing something wrong here? Right. All right. I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, when he recognized, he was conscious, aware of the touch that was coming towards him. He reaches out in divine uh, he reaches out in divine healing. Notice his response. We can go to the next slide. Mark 5 and verse 34. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. He knew. And of course, uh, he, he, he uh, made it more dramatic. He called out, who is the one who touched me? And the, and the, and the disciples, of course, you know, tried to sh say, what, Lord, what are you saying? You know, I mean, look at the crowd around you. But Jesus knew there was something special about that touch. There was a lot of other touches, but this touch was special. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. You know, there is much more than just what you read there. It is not just healing. There was something that made her whole. Uh, it was beyond healing. You know, what she experienced was something that was much, much beyond healing. Uh, uh, you know, healing we know is a demonstration of Jesus to show that he has authority over disease, death and dying. In other words, this is probably even going beyond the physical healing to tell her and to show her, you have become whole. In other words, salvation is available to you. You know, you, in one sense, are born again. And we talk about being born again, but here it is, right? His touch brings healing. You see, let us understand that healing is symbolic of what of we being made whole. And Jesus Christ, as he healed, was also demonstrating his power over death, which means salvation, right? And don't we recognize that? We as human beings need to be made whole. You see, we are, because we are predisposed to sin. Uh, that brings death. When Jesus was saying, your faith has healed you, he is saying that I forgive your sin because it is sin that brings death ultimately, isn't it? We are helpless in the face of sin. We are predisposed to sin. We need a savior. We need a savior. And Jesus is that Savior, right? Because it is he who has broken the power of sin. Sin that results and brings the suffering and the pain and the misery that we see all around us. Right? A theologian once said, and I thought it was a very interesting saying, he said, sin is not just a crime that needs to be punished, but a disease that needs to be healed. I thought there was something tremendously interesting about that statement. Let me just give you that statement again. Sin is not just a crime that needs to be punished, but a disease that needs to be healed. You know, there's a lot of meaning in what 
that statement uh, has. A lot of meaning. We sometimes are so uh, hard, you know, we press ourselves to talk about punishment and sin needs to be punished. But we forget the fact that we are all predisposed to sin and the wages of sin is death and we are all dying. I mean, yes, I, I'm not minimizing the choice that we make. Sometimes we choose to sin and which needs to be dealt with. But we are all predisposed to sin and we all are diseased in that respect by sin. And that has to be taken care of. We need a physician. We need the touch of healing. We need the touch of salvation. And in one sense, you know, in this short passage, I would, I would like to say that the whole gospel is contained. In this one little incident, the whole gospel is contained, right? In this short event. How? You might ask, you know, all her works, going to the physician, spending money, did not save her, did not heal her of her disease. But she had to reach out to someone who could heal her. And who was that? Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, by his incarnation and coming to the earth, already touched her with that healing. He has touched humanity with that healing. That's the gospel, isn't it? The world cannot be saved by works. It needs a divine savior. And Christ in the incarnation has come and accepted humanity. And all we need to do is in faith, reach out and touch him. Touch his clothes. Touch his body. Touch his blood. Well, metaphorically speaking, obviously, you know, I, this is not literal, but metaphorically, we need in faith to respond to the fact that Jesus in his incarnation has accepted all of humanity. And so we have the gospel, you know, in short, in all of that. And so, brethren, the touch of royalty, the touch of Jesus is much more than the touch of royalty. Like I said, it's the touch of healing. It's the touch of salvation. It's the touch that frees us from the bondage to sin and brings us into wholeness. And as we celebrate Christ the King, uh, we are now moving into the season of the Advent in a few short weeks. We can go to the next slide. The miracle of the Advent. And this is something we need to celebrate because this is our hope that divinity has come to save humanity. Right? The miracle of the advent. Uh, royalty came to us. We didn't, we didn't need to go, you know, to find royalty, but royalty came to us. It is so important for us to understand and celebrate the incarnation. And I think in our fellowship, we have come to know that more and more and more. We used to never celebrate Christmas. We used to say, oh, it's a pagan festival. It is not on December the 25th. We used to have all kinds of excuses to say no 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 we don't but now we're beginning to see this is indeed the beginning of salvation this why that is why the liturgical calendar starts with the advent right because we are celebrating the divine touch the touch of divinity but now comes the important part uh Talking about the miracle of Advent, I just found a, a, you know, an, a short rendition of it where it says it's on the screen. It was for mercy, it was for justice, it was for love, and it was for grace that he became incarnate. It was from before time 
from the beginning of creation, from the birth of man at his hands, from the moment his breath filled Adam's lungs, it was from then that it began. The incarnation began before humanity sinned. That was the plan of God, that divinity would one day touch humanity. And humanity and divinity would exist, coexist for all eternity. That was the plan of God. God. That was the purpose of creation. That was the overflow of the love of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit to bring us into communion with him. But now the important thing for us. Now that we've been touched, you and I have been, have the divine touch. Does it stop there? No, it doesn't. We become carriers of that touch. We become communicators of that divine touch. We demonstrate that touch by touching others. You see, the God we worship wants relationship to go out and doesn't stop with us and God, but it goes from us to all of the world. We demonstrate that touch by touching others. Through, how do we do that? Through affirming others. Through accepting others. Through the gestures of mercy. Through the gestures of goodness, of kindness, of compassion. Through, we, we communicate that divine touch through the gestures of hospitality. Of forgiveness. Are we communicating the divine touch? By forgiving others. And learning to accept one another. In the bond of love and unity. That we have in the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. You know sadly. When we talk about touch. We can't help but talk about. A touch of destruction. Have you heard of bad touch? safe touch what kind of a touch do we have today in this world it's a touch of destruction touch a touch that violates the body and we see that happen again and again and again the rape cases that we see the molestations that we see the incest that we see people are touching to violate the body to do violence to the soul. To crush the human spirit. And to see what's happening in Ukraine and Russia. To see what's happening. Through the abuse of racism. And casteism. To see the destruction of discrimination. That is unfortunately the touch. That we are more accustomed to. Than the touch of forgiveness. Of love and kindness. We Christians are called. To communicate that touch. Just a day or two back. I heard about. 36 people being killed in Thailand. 25 of them children. I think it is. A man who. Took a gun. Went to a daycare center. And massacred 37 people. Including children. What kind of a touch is this? How sad we see the touch of destruction all around us. But the touch of Jesus is to give life. The touch of Jesus is to give life and to give it more abundantly. What a contrast. What a difference. Do you have the opportunity to touch someone? Do you touch them with goodness and compassion? With love and kindness? That is the challenge that is left for us, GCI in Hyderabad, GCI in India. We need to be more conscious of learning to touch one another, touch and communicate that touch. We in GCI need now to consciously think about how can we touch, pass on the divine touch to more and more people. Let's not keep the touch to ourselves. We are blessed, but 
we want to bless others. And so, brethren, if you go to the last slide, today we have the privilege of experiencing the power of his divine presence and his divine touch. Jesus Christ has reached out and touched us. And we will celebrate, of course, with the coming of the Advent and the Christ, the incarnation and on to uh, his uh, crucifixion, death and resurrection. Jesus Christ has touched us in so many different ways. It is not a it is not just a royal touch, like I said, but it's a touch of divinity, of love, of acceptance, of redemption, of salvation. Christ has given us his body and his blood that we might have life through him. Do you want to reach out and touch his body, his blood that he has given to us? And so, brethren, allow him to touch you and experience the depth of his infinite mercy and love and let's reach out to touch him and let us have life in his name join me as i pray for the elements and we participate in the communion let's pray gracious loving father through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for, indeed, what is more than a touch of royalty, even as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. Lord, we know that he is king over all. He is Lord of the heavens and the earth. But most significantly for us, Father, as we come to the table today, we know that we have been touched by divinity to bring us life, redemption, healing, healing, not just physical, but spiritual. Lord Almighty, as we participate in this very meaningful ritual, which we call communion, we ask for your blessing upon this bread and this wine, symbolizing your body broken for us. And your blood shed for us that we might have life and life eternal. And so gracious Lord, grant that we may touch you through this simple act of taking the communion together as the body of Christ here in Hyderabad. And wherever it is being celebrated around the world, we thank you, Father, for your touch of divinity that grants us life. Thank you for the privilege of being able to touch you, even as a woman did and was healed and her suffering stopped. We look forward to the time and the fullness of your kingdom is here and the sufferings of this world will end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.